Welcome back to the Cards Franchise. This is your host, Sammy33, and we're going to start this one with the May edition of the recap. As with we did with April, will be a two-parter. The Dodgers, you've already seen, recapping that and kind of what happened around the league. Really with the draft, the focus in that one, but we're going to look around, completely look around, look at some stats, standings, all that good stuff. So, of course, we'll start with the standings since that's what everyone always wants to see record, record, record. So, in the East, the Nats, 36 and 20. Braves, three games back. Both won seven of their last ten, as you can see there. Phillies and Marlins above 500 as well. I mean, everyone in this division is playing relatively well. The Mets, yeah, 26 and 30, but and they're not far from 500. Just not looking good right now. But hey, four teams with a record above 500. It's not bad. To the Central, my stomping grounds. The Cardinals lead the division. We lost the last two, as you saw in the last video, but we still lead the division, mainly because all four of these teams under 500. Kind of hard to lose a division if no one wants to win games, you know? We'll see how things play out as the season goes on. Once we start beating up on each other, I imagine someone else will pop up. Hopefully we can stay up there. Run differential is a little bit higher. As you can see the drop in difficulty. We still don't get... We had a couple games where we had a, a bunch of hits, but for the most part, the hits aren't overwhelmingly, you know, we're not like, it's not like we're averaging 13, 14 hits a game or anything like that, so... Eh. Eh. Let's see. The West, the Dodgers. Don't I know? Lead the way. 40 and 16. Eight of their last 10. They just took a series against us, so you know things are going well there. Padres, 36 and 22. Expected. And then you got the Giants, also above 500, a couple games over, riding a four game win streak. The D backs, ouch. Over their last 10. 18 games under 500, so really having a rough year this year. The wild card, the Padres, no shock there. And then the Braves, a couple games back. And then looking at it, as no surprise, you see the Phillies and Marlins. Again, the NL East has four teams with the winning record, so you'd imagine they'd be in the hunt. You got the Giants as the last team that is above 500. Then you look down there, Mets, Reds, Brewers, Cubs. Keep your eyes on Milwaukee and Chicago. I feel like one of those teams will start to get things together. Which one? I don't know. We'll see. And believe it or not, Pirates don't have the worst record in the league. Oh, yes. It's an accomplishment. The Rockies, D-backs. Worst records in the Pirates. Who are riding a four-game win streak? Go, go Pittsburgh, go. The American League. The Yankees. Pacing the way. 32-18. and 18. Again, another division. They're the only team with a winning record, thus they have a monstrous 13-game lead already. That's disgusting. They're just, and look at that run differential, almost 100. It's crazy. The central tight race here between Cleveland and Minnesota, separated by half a game. Pretty similar in runs scored and runs allowed, so having the same success help. Home and away, it's about the same. One thing that's helping more is Minnesota's been beating up on the division, so we'll see what happens as they start to venture out and play more American League teams. Or maybe I should say, or actually no, they're going to have more games in the division. 34 already for, in, for you know, say Indiana, Cleveland. We got the White Sox. Yeah. Can they get it together and make a run? We'll see. And then Tigers and, of course, Kansas City. Yeah, six in a row. Ouch. Chilling at the bottom. In the West, the popular division in chat, you got the Astros, bang bang, in first, Angels in second, hmm, A's, even losing 11 in a row, not even won three in a row, they just, they're all over the place, they're four games under 500, and then at the bottom, you've got the Mariners and the Rangers tied for fourth. Wild card, the Twins, the Angels, go Trout, go. And then you've got no other team with a winning record, so it's really easy to get a wild card spot to finish 500 or better. I'm sure those numbers will go up as the division opponents start to play each other more, but it's a long way down. you got the White Sox, four back, the best of teams without a winning record. A's right behind them. Going down the list, and you got the Royals all the way in the back, 10 and a half out of first, or out of a wild card spot. 
Alright, and we will look at Player of the Month. Some we didn't look at in the last video. I don't know why. When we did the recap last, I'm not sure why. But um, I'm excited to do it for reasons that you'll see shortly. So, in the American League for April, we had Verlander, Rendon, who's playing at an MVP level right now. And this young guy, you may have heard of him, especially the pretty popular guy first week of the season. Can't imagine why. And in May, you got Beaver, dominant. As you're going to see for reasons later, Altuve, 386 for the month. Five home runs with 21 runs batted in. And Alex out there in right field for the Twins. 355 in his short time. Switch to the National League show. So, for April, Scherzer. Former Cardinal, Marcelo Zuna, 423 for the month. It's ridiculous. Yules... Ozuna's having an unreal season right now. Look at that April. That's super impressive. It takes like two or three months for some people to get those kind of numbers in terms of runs batted in or hits. Or, sorry, hits home runs. Oh, hits too. And you got Zach in left. 222 home runs, seven runs batted in. And then, of course, in May, you know why I was excited to look at this. If you've been watching the stream or you've been watching these videos, Will Smith, 0.69 ERA. Oh, yes. Bryce Harper. 376. So for a dude that was struggling to start the season, average is 288. Damn. Very, very impressive. But this guy, that's why I was happy. 41 at bats, 317 batting average, 5 home runs, 9 runs batted in, and on top of that, 5 stolen bases. Great, great, great addition to the squad. David B gets a huge pat on the back for this. And right now, we're just trying to find more at-bats for this kid. We got to keep him in the lineup as much as possible. And something else we want to look at. The All-Star team, who makes it? Will we have any cards, especially with these piss-poor bats? Well, probably pitching-wise. See, after two months, Wayna and Kim second and third in votes. Wayna was kind of a nice way to see some stats, too. 1.9 ERA, the league leader, Kim. 1.26, very, very impressive. See some familiar names when I look at Paddock, 7 0. Never would have guessed that. Even with that lineup, just you never would have guessed. Dude is dealing 2.66 ERA, you 2.62. Their rotation is disgusting. You know, Gore is coming at some point. Um, Bauer down there, former SSU guy, Mr. Strasburg. Look at this guy. Not getting any recognition, but he can't win games. Look at that ERA, 2.3. Very, very impressive. A lot of sub-3 ERAs. Scherzer, 1.9. Dominus, the strikeouts, 73. DeGrom, 83. A couple of sub-guys, uh, sub-1 whips, too. See, Kim and Wayno make it. Scherzer makes it. DeGrom's close. Some good numbers there. Relief pitcher, Gallegos. Can't say I'm surprised. He gets a little bit of a boost because he gets to get saves. So, because he's not listed as a closer, this is what you get. You got Ponce down there. He's essentially our fifth starter. And you got Drew, Mr. Miller. Elsley as well. He's had bullpen's been pitching really well. The pitching minus Alex Reyes. How far down is he? I think he might be listed on the closer list because he's a closer. Um, he's not coming anywhere close. Hater. Look at that. Look at Jake McGee. 13 and 2 thirds. 0.66 whip. Disgusting. Yep, there's Alex Reyes down there. The struggles. Alright, catcher. No surprise, Mr. Power Guy, Will Smith. Real Muto is third. Going extremely far down the list. You got Yachty. Can't complain about Yachty, though. He's having a good year in terms of one stat that I'm really digging. Don't know if I'll be able to see it here. We'll have to look at it later. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to see it from the screen. That's okay. First base. Goldie. She finally got that average up to 200, so maybe he's turning the corner. Botto leading the way. 11 home runs, 34 runs batted. Remember when we used to debate between these two and Goldie, which was the best first baseman? Seems like so long ago, huh? Reese Hoskins down there. Muncie and then that guy pulls. He won't be making it. 
but his bat is starting to heat up, so that's nice to see. Second base, Keston, 18 home runs. Very, very impressive. Starling Castro batting 316. Keston could be a sneaky guy for MVP, let me tell you. X card. Hold on. Alright, third base. So, eh. But the competition is, is tough here. Carp's got the highest, higher batting average. But the other guys do have more home runs than runs batted in, so Carp's just trying to hang in there. Carp definitely is our MVP, so hey, we'll take that. But Machado, no surprise to see him up there. Suarez, he's been ball when he hits well. Short, Turner. Tatis, the better seeker. And then going down the list, Lindor, batting 254, man. I wonder how Mets fans would feel if he was batting that right now. Tommy Edmond, 201. So again, trying to get some of those guys up. Got the young down there exactly at 200. Trevor Story, 195. He's having a rough year. Probably a big reason why the Rockies are in dead last. I mean, granted, him hitting well probably wouldn't make a huge, huge difference, but you'd hope that he at least would be putting up his numbers, right? Probably on my guess, he's probably stressing because not having support around him, having to do a little too much. Ozuna leading the way in left field, former Cardinal Tommy Pham, the young stud Juan Soto, all batting above 300. Ozuna batting 377. It's ridiculous. Peterson, hell, if nothing else, we're helping to keep him up there with how many home runs he hits off of me. And Yelich way down there, but still 307, 6 and 16, just not putting in, not producing runs, but getting on base. Belly and center, no shock. Acuna, 320. Lorenzo Kane, 285, very impressive. It's going to be a while going down here before we see a Cardinal. You know, Harrison Bader. And then in right field, 4 0 and a drive. Mookie Betts, 277 for 4 0, 337. Then definitely have to go down the ways. Will Myers, Chuck Nasty, the rookie. 122,000 votes, and then Dylan Carlson. Imagine, like a sixth of the work, or four, a quarter of the work, in terms of at-bats. More home runs, yes, fewer runs batted in, but more stolen bases, like Dukes is doing significantly more than that. And then looking at the National League, Bieber, Verlander, Cole, Cole will definitely be the first to 100 strikeouts. This massive one, less sale pick. No, and that depends on who pitches next. Relief pitchers: Foster, Nick Anderson, Jake Callish, Stanek. Good list of guys here. Closers: Kirby Yates, Shop, Holdis Chapman, Azuna. Yeah, yeah, I know, but dude's pitching well. Alex Colome. Hey, I love this guy when I used him on the Cardinals last year. Catcher. Salvi. Mejia. Bad 268. Producing 27 runs bad. And it's not bad for a guy. Switch hitting catcher. Not he has always been moved around a lot of late, but in the last couple of years. Dude has some talent, so happy to see him perform well. Sean Murphy, 307, 7 home runs, 20 runs batted in. Mancini leading the way at first base. Luke right behind him and Jose there too. Like this is a close race. You see, only separated by six thousand votes between those two. It's pretty impressive, especially Mancini because he does not have around him what uh, Luke and Jose have. And also going down here, Bobby Dahlback. Nice. Second base, DJ. Speaking of guys around with the Yankees, you got Jose Galaber. We all know how old that guy is. Whit Merrifield batting 304. But look at Altuve, 342. Dude's having a good year. The quote unquote bounce back here. Rendon and the bringer of rain. A huge, huge gap there. Rendon's just outpacing the league. 342, 19 home runs, 49 runs batting. He's an MVP candidate for sure. Vlad, 727, 327. Seeger, Kyle, 220. Ty France, 242. Xander. Polanco. 
nice production there. Like this with Andrews, look at that. 10 or 5 home runs. 25 runs batted in, and it's still only 10 bases. Not bad. Tim Anderson down there, too, a little bit farther down in the glitch. Alberto Mondesi could use him playing in real life because I need him for my uh, fancy team. And then Bobachet. Left field. Alvarez, a healthy stand because, you know, the Yankees are super healthy on MLB The Show. Crush Davis, not bad. 13 home runs over there in Texas. And Brantley, keep an eye on him. He's still on the trading block. 8 home runs, 26 run batted in. Thir her 313 batting average. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I don't know what you're trying to say about this guy, so we'll skip him. Not important anyway. Uh, only the best player in baseball. We have Verduga, 534, batting 328. Kyle Lewis, Mariner fans will love to see this. 263, 10 home runs, 33 runs bat in, and 5 steals. Very, very impressive. Um, doing good work in Toronto, 1329 and 255. Let's see the average come up a little bit, but he's definitely producing. Okay, former card, 6 home runs, 27 runs bat in. Gotta get that average up though. And then lastly, right field. Hmm. Age doesn't get, apparently father time doesn't catch us all. Nine home runs and batting 309. The Franimal, 13 home runs, 37 runs bat in, 236 batting average. Dude's banging. I don't even, look, this is ridiculous. I don't even know what to say about this. This is crazy. Dexter Fowler, 11 home runs, 26 runs bat in. Think I couldn't use him right now to switch hitting outfielder. This is awkward. Third in the league. Hmm. Hanniger. What? This is 11 home runs for Fowler. I just have to look now. 19, 18, 13, 17, 12, 13. Hmm. Hmm. And his years in Colorado. Two years he hit double digit home runs. Hmm. Well, there's an interesting one there. Hey, I remember this guy too. Kepler, three home runs, 17 runs bad in. 306 batting average. Not too bad. Well, that will do it for your all star stars. We'll see who gets the call once we get closer to the break.